USA Warrior Stories is a not-for-profit organization designed to record, archive, and share videos of veterans' stories. To help veterans make a connection with one another and to help us all better understand their sacrifices for our freedoms. Today's trip, we're escorting about 34 Vietnam veterans and one World War II veteran down to Washington, D.C. It's our first full trip since the pandemic. We're excited to finally give the Vietnam veterans the welcome back they much so deserve. Since 2007, Honor Flight Long Island has had the privilege of escorting World War II and Korean War veterans to their memorials in Washington, D.C. With this flight, we continue to show our respect and admiration, which will not only enable us to thank each of you, our Vietnam veterans, it will also allow us to try and help heal a wound that was opened as a result of the Vietnam War. We're helping to separate a, a whole bunch of letters and notes from students from the Tuckahoe Common School District out in Southampton. And all of these were written by the students uh, up through eighth grade to give out to each one of the veterans for mail call. Another part of the Honor Flight program is Flags of Our Heroes. These are veterans who have not been on an Honor Flight. So we're gonna be honoring them today and they're, they're, they're deceased. So what we do is we take their photos and American flags which were provided by members of Congress. We bring it down to their memorial. We'll take a photo there of the photo in the flag, and then we're gonna bring those back and present it to the families. That's the Flags of Our Heroes program. As we're pushing out, we're going to get a water salute. So I've never seen that before, so it's, it's an honor for us too to have this said today. So again, we're going to have a water salute as we're taxiing out for all you veterans today, and thank you again. Everybody, we gotta get out of this place. If it's the last thing we ever do, we gotta get out of this place. Oh, it's a better place for me and you. Look out the window, folks. They're spraying us again. Have a nice clean time there. Yeah. Yeah, I'm Keith Gentry. I'm coordinator of the Honor Flight Motorcycle Escort Team. Um, on average, we do anywhere from 35 to 50 escorts a year. Um, it's a real honor and pleasure for us to come out and escort the veterans down to D.C. and spend a little time with them. Um, again, it's, it's just something we love to do, and hopefully we'll give you a real nice show going down the road. Once we get on board the bus, we'll head towards Washington. And as you can see by the schedule, our first stop is at the National Archives where we will be able to see some really important documents in the history of the United States, one being the Declaration of Independence, another one the Constitution.
say you two can't sit together. They're, they're, they're breaking the rules here. They should not be allowed to sit together. We're causing trouble. Just in case anyone wants, I've got re-enlistment forms here. <laughs> This is the World War II Memorial. It first and foremost honors the 16 million men and women who fought for our freedom. But it is not the World War II Veterans Memorial. It is a generational memorial. And in my 17 years volunteering, every World War II veteran has said, we would not have been able to win the war without all the support from all the people back home. The people that are front and center in every one of these ball reliefs are those individuals that were doing something. This is what I call a people memorial. The people back home and the 16 million men and women who were in uniform. That was 12.6% of the U.S. population served in World War II. My friends went, volunteered early, they got killed. My cousins got wounded, my brother was wounded. And it brings back all the memories and all the fellows that I lost during the service. But. Uh, Every time you got a telegram, you knew it was bad news. That's the only way you found out. And uh, when they, they seen the Western Union guy, people start crying and shaking. He was either wounded, missing, or uh, dead. You know, tough times. I have Nancy here with me, which I thank so much for making this day a wonderful day for us. Oh, he's a good guy. And I appreciate it so much for what the honor flight I've done. And for a friend of mine, a uh, buddy got killed in his platoon, Roland, his name is, uh, his name is right here. Yeah. He was killed 13 April 68, and my friend's, uh, he was a platoon sergeant and said he lost 13 men that day. Wow. I, I'm looking for an uh, Alameda I found. Uh, he died uh, on November 1st, 68, when we had a ground attack. Cobb, Gerard, and Wright, Booker T. Wright, the three of them died basically together from a mortar attack. That's what I'm looking for now. At Jerry Dauber, I'm looking for my wife because he was a twin and she knew his sister. Honor flight is a, the most a terrific thing I've seen. I love it. I mean, it gives the guys a, a good perspective and it gives them the acknowledgement that they never had before. I had four people. One changed places with me and got killed like 10 minutes later in an uh, ambush. And that would be Ben, Cole, and then Hauser. We were out in forward observer position and uh, they thought there was movement up front. And it wound up being that you know person faced face the wrong way and wound, wound up killing Hauser. You know, if he woke up and turned to his left, it could have been me. The other sergeant was, uh, when I first got drafted, was our platoon sergeant. He retired and he decided, you know what, I can't live without the Army. He was transferred into Vietnam and through other gentlemen, we found out where he was and we all went to visit him, and a week later he was killed. And the last one was uh, Rathburn. Uh, we were out on a patrol, and the next morning we were getting up, 
we were going waiting for our helicopters and we had sniper fire and he uh, he was killed and then our operations changed to search and destroy type missions and it was just another day everybody's been so generous and nice to all us veterans and we really appreciate it Davis. Charles Davis, yeah. I'm gonna get a No, second. Second time. Yeah. I um, you know, I do I memorialize these guys and yeah. every day, uh, you know, the days that they we lost them. Yeah, it's an emotional thing, you know. Respect is just beyond belief. The respect for all these guys, it's just uh, so appreciative of, of all the volunteers that that uh, help us out and do what they're doing today. I mean, it's just a day that's just hard to believe. They were friends of mine. I went to school with them. We all went, actually, a lot of guys from Farmingdale uh, on the island. A lot of guys didn't come back. Um, I was the aircraft commander okay. of the of the AC-119 gunship. Okay. Six of eight crew members that killed that were killed in a crash in 1969 used to fly with me. And the aircraft commander who I upgraded, he came from pilot training, was my co-pilot for six months and I upgraded him to an aircraft commander. A few flights into his mission, they ended up losing an engine and couldn't maintain altitude and went down and six of the eight crew members died on that mission. So I was down here uh, today and I went down to the wall yep. and I got tracings of all eight crew members. You know, uh, Meredith Anderson, Robert Fagel, Tom Lubers, he was the aircraft commander who was my co-pilot that I upgraded. Charles Knowles was, Tommy's co-pilot on that flight, Joseph Chesnick was uh, one of the flight engineers, and those are the people, and uh, Michael Van Gessie, he was the other uh, fellow that died on the flight. So, uh, you know, I've, um, I, I've been here with Honor Flight a number of times because I was involved in getting Honor Flight started back in 2007, but, um, Never been to Vietnam Wall, wall, so it means a big, big deal to me right now, and I was able to do that. From Vietnam, when I was in Vietnam, I have a picture of St. Jude I had in my wallet, and a picture of me in the middle, Sal Samelli, and Black, three of us. <coughs> Excuse me. And that picture I had on me since Vietnam, because when the Vietnamese used to take a picture, it used to go to the, we sent it to the families. So Sal's mom family would see it, and my family would see it. And when they were both killed, I still had that picture on me from when we took the pictures in Vietnam, along with St. Jude, in the war, still on me right now.
you know, the one thing that we try to talk about at the tomb is knowledge, right? And, and what people don't know and what they don't understand, especially the super young kids, the middle schoolers who giggle and chuckle and have no clue of what's going on here. Um, I really try to get somebody out there to talk to them so that they can understand we wouldn't go to their family's gravesite and, and make a mockery or laugh about it yeah. or not understand why we click our heels together in the homage that we pay to the 3rd Cavalry Regiment when they wore spurs on their boots. Different things. We try to let them know. The best thing they can do with that after they've recorded it on their phone, because there's no way they don't have it, they're going to upload it somewhere or they're going to show somebody. And that person's going to show 10 more people. And so we try to educate and share everything that we possibly can. All my soldiers that I have here are all volunteers. I will never go to another place in the military or army and have the same commitment where, where every single soldier wants to be at work. Thank you.